So far, we've learned about arithmetic and geometric sequences. Now, in this lesson, it is time to learn about arithmetic series and also compare the difference between this and arithmetic sequences and see how they're related. So, let's dive right into it. So, let's think about sequences and what we've learned about them in the arithmetic sequences video. If you haven't watched our video on arithmetic sequences yet, we encourage you to go ahead and watch that lesson first before moving on to this one, since it'll help you to understand the context of what we're teaching in this lesson. Otherwise, let's go right into looking at an example of our first sequence. So here we've got three, five, seven, nine, and 11. Now, a sequence is just a collection or list of numbers. A series, on the other hand, is the addition of a list. So, while this is an example of an arithmetic sequence, an arithmetic series would look like this, which is the addition of all the numbers. Now, instead of denoting this as t of n, which represents the number of the term we're looking for or that we're on, we would denote a series with this s of n, which we would use to represent the sum of all the numbers up to the nth term. All right, so first of all, let's start by focusing on arithmetic sequences first and bring up the formula for it again. So the A here stands for the first term in the sequence and the D stands for the common difference. And if you remember, this formula is essentially a summarized version of this, which describes each term as the first term plus the multiplication of the difference between the terms depending on which terms we're on. So as you can see, each of these equations represents each one of these terms in the sequence. Good. And if an arithmetic series is represented as the addition of these terms, then we can technically write it out as the addition of these equations, like so, since they are representative of each term. As we can see, we have our a as the first term, which in this example would be 3. Then we have the addition of a and the difference, the difference being 2 in this case, giving us the 5 that we see here. Then a plus 2 times the difference, which would be 3 plus 2 times 2, giving us the 7 here. And so on and so forth, until we get to the second last term which would be this last term minus the difference. In this case, it's 11 minus 2, giving us the 9 that we have here. And finally, our last term being 11 in this example. Great. So this general formula for arithmetic series looks right so far, but we can still simplify it further. All right, so let's just begin with this thought experiment. What if we duplicated this equation and reversed the order of the formula to look like this? Well, if we added both of the equations together, which is effectively multiplying the same formula by 2, only in a unique way, we'd end up with the following. Now, if we simplify this, every term with d in it is conveniently subtracted by itself, which ends up making the formula look like this. So it seems that we've ended up with a formula that is just the addition of a plus t of n over and over again. Now, what would determine how many times we should perform this a plus t of n? Well, that would be determined by the n number of terms that we have. So we can actually simplify this side of the equation to just n times a plus t of n. And now we can divide both sides by two to isolate for s of n to get the following. Great. As a matter of fact, we can actually simplify this one step further. We already know what the equation for t of n is, since it's the same formula for arithmetic sequences. It's just a plus n minus one times d. 
So we can just replace the t of n with that to get the following. Finally, we can actually simplify this down to become this. And that's our final formula for arithmetic series. Awesome. So let's try one example using the newfound formula. What would the s of 12 be if we were given the following series? Well, all we would need to do is determine two things here in order to fulfill the rest of the variables in the formula to find our answer. That would be the first term in the series denoted as a and the difference between each term denoted as d. So our first term here is negative 12 and the difference is 4. Now, all we need to do is plug in our respective values, including 12 as our n value, which is already given to us. So simplifying this gives us 6 times negative 24 plus 44. This equals to 6 times 20, which gives us a final answer of 120. Therefore, the sum of all the terms in this series up to the 12th term would be 120. Awesome. And there we have it. Learning arithmetic series is as easy as that. So make sure to practice different examples until it feels natural to you. So that concludes this lesson and we hope to see you guys in the next lesson on geometric series.